I'll get you better ones. All right. Uh, oh, wow. People actually came in. Okay. Well, hi. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, sorry. Are we ready to begin? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, hi. So, uh, nice, nice chat with you all. Um, we're, um, I'm, uh, so, this is a follow-up to a talk that Ming Wong gave uh, last Foss Asia. And so this is sort of like the update. I expect at, at most Foss Asia's for the next few years until we have our own conference, uh, or I guess the company fails. Uh, we, will, we will be giving one of these. Um, so I'll be talking mostly uh, uh, about legalese. Uh, this is our, our Twitter handle. Uh, this is me. Um, I, I'm, the, I'm the tech evangelist at legalese. Uh, I do this kind of for fun. And when I don't do that, I work for the uh, uh, Ethereum Foundation. Um, if you want to talk about Ethereum, we can talk about that too. So. Um, yeah, if you're curious, uh, I am the, I am the Internet Man of Mystery. Uh, it's uh, you can like look it up. <laughs> there is a there's a there's, there's a funny uh, New York Times article about me. Um, so okay, let's just kind of jump on jump jump on into it. So the, these are uh, the, the the three basic things I'm, I'm going to communicate to you. Uh, the, the first one is that you know uh, computational legal. Uh, this this was previously not a thing. Well, people wouldn't argue it's quite a thing yet. Uh, we argue it will be a thing, and it will probably make a lot of money. And, uh, and it would be nice if we could make money uh, and, and, and colonize for, for open source as well. Because, you know, that's like, I mean, you know, you make the world a better place and you make money, which is like, you know, two wins. Um, uh, so, uh, the, so for the techies out there, as we argue, uh, well, there's several ways that legal could be uh, computationalized. We argue it'll be through a fancy programming language uh, that we are developing. Uh, you can see our GitHub there. Um, and then we're going to show you the fun things just about uh, legalese and the company. We are, we are a Singaporean tech startup. Uh, we're a little over a year old and we just raised our seed round. Um, and then we'll tell you some lovely takeaways. So let's tell you the vision first. So the fundamental claim is so uh, many industries have been uh, computationified and we, we, and we assert that uh, the contract drafting will be, will be the next one to fall. And we're like, awesome. So here are some examples uh, where, the, where this, is, this has happened before. So this is a, a domain, and this is a, a language that was invented to represent that domain. And this is a company that made a lot of money after, after, uh, after, after inventing this language. The starred ones are, are, uh, were, were, were open source languages. So uh, perhaps the easiest example uh, is, 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 is Adobe. Uh, so Adobe's first product was not Photoshop, it was PostScript which gave uh, an, an easy way for your printer to print the page. And they built various cool products on top of PostScript. And this, uh, and this, this pattern, this, is, this, is, this, is, this has happened several times uh, with you know, Oracle and SQL. Uh, another very nice one here is, uh, is Cadence. If I were to, uh, so in legalese, uh, so okay. If I were to claim the closest analogy to computational law, it would be Cadence. So uh, here's roughly how it worked. Uh, back in say like the early to mid 80s, if you wanted to uh, get get a, a new chip design, you would talk to your double E friend. You'd say, "Hey, I need a chip," and your double E friend would be like, "Oh, I'll, I'll like I'll like, get all the schematics," and then you'll send the schematics into the Escher. But sometimes it's not schematics to the Escher. Uh, wire A does not connect to wire B, and you're like, "Oh crap!" And you are just out about ten million dollars, and your company fails. So you're like, "Ah, that wasn't what we were looking for." So. Uh, so, so, uh, so developers, they, they no longer write in the actual chip schematics. They write in a higher level language called Verilog or VHDL. And so what they do, they, they, this is a programming language you need to write in software how you want your chip, chip to go. And it does uh, it, 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 it extensive sanity checking before you send it to the Escher. And so, so the claim would be that signing a legal document is kind of like sending it off to the Escher. Uh, because, because, well, I, because if there's a bug after you've signed it, the, the bug will usually benefit one party more than the other, and therefore, and therefore, the, they will not re re renegotiate. So, uh, yeah. So, so, so we would claim that just as in with, with hardware, once you send it off, you know, you really can't recall it. Uh, with law, uh, once you sign it, you really can't recall it. So, um, so yeah. So, so with law, uh, so the, the, the market for legal uh, is bigger than the market for chips. Uh, but it's probably smaller than that of the printed page. So the claim would be that uh, some company will exist here within the next, oh, probably 10 to 15 years. And it will be worth somewhere between 7 billion and 45 billion. So, um, hey, opportunity. Opportunity. Is this, oh, it's gonna work. Hello. Hello. 
here we go. Okay, here we go. Um, so, uh, so, so, so people ask, oh, uh, why will law be next? So here is a, here's a nice example. So this is a seed investment agreement. Actually, it's from Singapore. Um, and, uh, and so this is one, one that we actually, actually received. Uh, this is uh, very unpleasant to read. If you want to, you can get the feeling of it. It's, it's, it's unpleasant. Uh, but it has this kind of if-then kind of structure. It says, oh, you know, if it's that, then this. And so, and so Ming showed me this once, maybe, oh, maybe a little under two years ago. And he said, Virgil, why wasn't it just this? And I was like, that's a good question, Ming. That's a good question. And, you know, and, and particularly notice, you know, you know, the, 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 the why the above line. And the idea was when he said, oh, well, why can't I write this and have it compiled to this? So it kind of says English is, is, is like an assembly language. You know, you know, you know, you know real human, like, like you don't actually want, want to like write in this. And, the, and the, the claim is that modern legal drafting is, is basically doing assembly programming by hand. And you're like, oh, well, um, this is, it's, like, it's like, oh, well, I mean, if you actually want to like program, pr program things, you know, yeah, we can show you much better ways of doing this than assembly. We actually have a lot of experience doing this. So, um, yeah, so, so the, the, the fundamental idea uh, for computational legal is to write in this and compile to this. So uh, the, the, the lawyers themselves actually somewhat came, came to the same idea. So uh, this is a lovely paper, if you want to, I'll send it to you. Uh, this is by a practicing lawyer. I think he was in um, um, New York, and then he went to academia. When in academia, he was teaching contract drafting, and he used his old contracts that you know that were like very successful in his in his practice. Uh, but then, but then while teaching them, he discovered his old contracts were were actually riddled with bugs, and he was like, oh, <laughs> you know, maybe we should like fix these. And and he has this kind of long paper, um, in short, where he says that you know you know bugs are everywhere, and and he has this nice nice line at the end. Saying you know, uh, saying saying oh, saying oh well, it'd be nice if we could uh, test uh, contracts the same way uh, engineers test for things. And he has ideas of using like flow charts and mathematical notation and stuff like that. Uh, however, he's basically unaware of ways of doing this in software. I mean, but that's okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, he's a lawyer. So here is uh, so this is uh, this is um, this is this is the things that are possible. So if you are a, a a software developer, uh, you have heard of you know you know, probably at least half of these things. And you just encountered them just through your career. Uh, you know, you just re-encountered them. So and these are sort of all the tools that have been invented over the past, say, say, say 50 years to deal with code complexity and code bugs. Uh, these are the tools that have been invented in the legal domain uh, over the same period of time. No, I know you're laughing, but no, like, I'm like, I'm like completely serious. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so where we have different languages, different formalisms, they have uh, funny Latin phrases. And where, and, and where we have, you know, you, know, so, you know, syntax highlighting and IDEs and spacing, uh, they have word. And where we have, you know, you, you know get and, and comparison, they have track changes. And where we have great libraries with testing tutorials, they have copy and paste. And so the idea would be that the rest of these, lawyers have never heard of them. And so you're like, oh, well, you know, well, you, know, uh, uh, you, know uh, you can make money here, 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 and here. Uh, yeah, so so this so, so this would be uh, sort of uh, the 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 way to do it. So the, the claim would be that you know uh, you can you can kind of take the past fifty years of, of us learning how to do software well and just kind of like just kind of import it in, 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 into law. And you're like, oh, you know, and, you, and then you just win. It's like, oh, well, that's that's great. So uh, so so this is uh, so this is uh, this is kind of the legal industry today. Uh, so this so this sort of the way the way that we think about it. So this would be the Microsoft Word document. Uh, this is uh, this is sort of like what it means, and this is uh, this this is kind of like this kind of like your workflow. Uh, don't worry, we'll, we'll zoom in on these. Uh, so I'll give you some examples. So most most people doing law tech, they're all over here uh, because they haven't really they haven't really figured out this kind of programming like idea yet. I mean, but they will. So here's some examples of this. So uh, Docracy, they want to be sort of a GitHub for law, so you can upload your legal templates and you can like, download them all and you like mix and match them. Uh, one problem with that is that uh, you as an end user, you don't actually know the, the, the templates that you need. So for example, so in Singapore, you need like eight agreement, like eight, eight, different, eight, eight different documents to do an investment agreement. And you probably don't know what those eight ones are. And if you did, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, you'd probably be a lawyer and you don't need this anyway. 
So, uh, so, so, one, so one issue with this is, is that it's very hard, even if you have all the templates, uh, it, uh, you, you have, there's like there's different little knobs on every template, uh, and every and all the little knobs across the eight, they, they all need to be the same. And you're like, oh, well, you know, and you, and you probably don't know those knobs. Uh, Rocket Lawyer is kind of interesting. So uh, they are a uh, so actually these are both in Silicon Valley. Uh, so Rocket Law, they are doing uh, fancy, fancy machine learning on, on legal corpuses. And they have this idea that uh, they want to do, do like intelligent clause and, and, and sentence completion. So they correctly notice that a lot of uh, you know, legal contracts, they're, they're fairly mechanical. They're like, oh, well, they're mechanical. We can basically do like um, predictive completion for you. Very sensible idea. Uh, I would note that we do not, uh, when we program today, uh, we do not do, uh, we're not going to do like function completion in, in like assembly. You know, and like no one's ever wanted to do that. Um, it was like, oh, you know, you know, if we if we want to like make it simply easier, we just go up to a higher level. And so this is what we would say is what you would actually do. Uh, and this is so. And this well, um, we'll we'll go that in a second. So this is this is this kind. Of, so like, ideally, you'd like to be able to so just kind of, kind of compile it like you do do like a C program, and it will kind of tell you all all, all the stuff that you can get out. Um, we'll we'll jump that back up, jump back that, jump to that in a second. Uh, so, so this, so this is kind of like the future we would like. So this is some code that that, that we actually wrote in our uh, preliminary language called L4, and the and the hope was that you could write something like this and click the compile button and get all your PDFs out. So, uh, so, so this, so this is a code for a for a seed agreement, and the idea is that you can just go, oh, generate, and just go, bam. Uh, so a very common thing would be something like. Um, so, say in Singapore, there are several ways, several different uh, investing, investing investment types. So, one might be uh, someone's like a convertible note, the other is say a safe. So, uh, common thing. So, so you usually don't really know. Usually, entrepreneurs they don't really know what they want. So, usually, pick a convertible note, but the investor will say, "Oh, well, I want a safe." So, the way you would uh, do this for like a traditional lawyer you'd say, "Hey, I just paid you, you know, like, you know, like like five k to like to do the convertible note, but now I want a safe." And the lawyer says, "Okay, great." Um, I will throw away the old work and I will make one of the safe for another 5k. And you're like, ah, that wasn't, you know, but with this, uh, you could just like change and change a little thing at the top and you just hit recompile and you're like, great. Uh, so, uh, so, th so this is uh, the, the future that we would like to have. So we'd like you to have, so you, you have uh, your, your code here, this main, and you like to say, oh, you know, just show me everything. And these are the output languages here. So the first thing I do, you, you want to do like, like, like this is sanity checking. So you, so you can say, oh, you know, you know, you have some clause here, but you know, but, but there's there's no way you could actually actually check that. It's true. Uh, another one might be, oh, so 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 one thing we're interested in. So okay, so a very common thing. Uh, there there's there's a certain quote, corporate processes you have to follow, and entrepreneurs just typically just don't know them, and they violate them like all the time without without even knowing it. And um, and fortunately, you know, I mean, I mean, uh, usually it's like a small thing. The government the government doesn't really care. But, uh, but presumably, you would like not to you know, start your company with violating the law, I and mean, that's usually not like that's, that's not very it's not a good way to start. Um, and the other way, you also have, have have checking against you know existing norms. So the idea would be something like this. So you want to output something like scenario visualization. So you say so this is kind of like fuzzing of a contract. So fuzzing like computer security, you have some black box of a function, and you sort of generate you sort of generate you know you know billions of different scenarios. And you kind of say, oh, you know, what happens when I when I when I throw throw uh, these inputs into the function? You might say something. Oh, I'd like to know. Is there ever a case where I give you a million dollars? If so, I'd really like to know that. Um, or is there ever a case where where I, where, I, where I give you my my, my company or, or or my child? Or, you know, this would be you know very important. I'd like to know about all of these. Uh, you can output to different natural languages. So so uh, just as you could you could compile to English, you could also compile to Mandarin. Uh, or, or Bahasa or something like that, and you actually have true multilingual contracts and have you know, relatively reasonable assurance that, that these the say the same thing. Just the same way that with the, with the C program you compile to say x86 or ARM, uh, you can compile to, 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 to different jurisdictions and you know, and, and, hopefully, and, and you can bypass translations and stuff like that. Uh, something that's a little more exciting and more dear to my heart is the idea of also compiling to Ethereum. So, uh, so in principle, uh, Ethereum w w would, would just be a w one more jurisdiction. Um, it would be a little more complicated because so the space of um, I mean, because the things that Ethereum can do is is is, is um, like like uh, there exists some contracts that you can't put onto Ethereum because it'll be like oracles and stuff like that. Um, so this might be like a, a little bit tricky, 
but uh, I guess the idea is that you would automate um, as, as much as you can. One cool idea about this is that, so you can output to English as well as Ethereum, and this gives you sort of a backwards compatibility layer for graceful fallback to the traditional legal system when terrible things happen. So one reason people don't want to do smart contracts, they're like, oh, well, what if we have a bug? They're like, are we just SOL? Uh, so the idea with this is like, oh, no, this time you're not. Uh, so if something terrible happens, you can go to a judge and you can say, hey, we agreed to this. And just hand like a 100-page PDF. And, and the judge never even sees the Ethereum. And the judge says, oh, a 100-page PDF. Oh, I'm totally used to working with this. And this, and this gives, gives you a, a, a traditional fallback so in case something terrible happens. And you're like, oh, well, that's great. So this is kind of like, like an onboarding ramp to the fancy smart contract future that we all want. So uh, often, uh, so, uh, so uh, uh, if you have multiple things you're doing, say, say you know, you're adding a director, adding an investor, uh, there's a particular sequence, uh, sequence in the, in the order you must do them in. Uh, and sometimes they do them like in the wrong order. So it'd be nice you could say, oh, well, you know, here's, here's the order that you have to submit these, these documents in. And this could also be uh, done in an automated way. Uh, there, there may be some deadlines, and you can uh, like automatically uh, uh, export it into, into iCal. Say, oh, these are your deadlines. You also say, oh, you know, th these are your obligations for the contract, and we can automatically uh, uh, export these to your Microsoft project or to whatever. So the hope would be like, this is what we want. Like, <laughs> this is what we want. We want you to do this, and if you can do this, you know, then you can conquer the world. So I seen here. So uh, oh, this one. So, okay, so, so the hope would be that so you could take English kind of like this, and then after you sort of render them into math, then, 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 you can do, then, 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 you, then the computer can do everything. So it, it can make nice flow charts, it can do scenario visualization, it can do sanity checks, it can say something like, oh, you know, is there ever a case where someone is compelled to do X and compelled to do Y, uh, but X and Y, they're, they're, they're mutually exclusive. It's like, oh, well, you know, you can't do that, and, and therefore, therefore, you have a bug. So like, you should go fix that. And you can, yeah, and this is, uh, and this is great. Uh, and these are all things that lawyers have no idea you can do. So, uh, so, so, so this, so what I showed you was the vision, and this is what we have so far. So uh, our prototype language is called L4, uh, L4 for legal, and, uh, and, and also because uh, there's nothing else called L4, so it's nice and easy to Google. So, uh, so, so, so this is sort of the history of formalizations of contracts. So this is the first one. Uh, so it goes back a while. So this is the 86. Uh, so in this one, uh, so this is for, okay, so you know, it's some particulars about the person uh, and, and to determine if they qualify for, 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 for British citizenship. And there's like this big complicated flow chart that is actually a crazy act. And there was this whole thing in prologue. And it's like, oh, that's neat. Um, so this is kind of the, the first one. Um, a little more modern. This is, this is a PhD thesis uh, doing this in, a, in Haskell for a wider variety of contracts. Uh, this is actually probably our, 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 our favorite one. Uh, for, so I, there, there are many papers uh, doing this for, um, I guess, subsets of contracts. If you want one that's for, um, you know, a little more general, this is probably the best one currently. There's a funny thing. Actually, almost all the people doing this, they're all in Europe. Like, I don't, I don't really know why. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I'm from America. I'm usually, like, you, know, you, know, you know, USA number one. But no, this is, like, this is like definitely like Dan Danish number one. I was just like, why are they all Danish? Um, if I were to guess, it would be because, you know, maybe they're used to the idea they're being, so they have very similar legal concepts because they're all part of the EU, but they all have different natural languages. So this idea is, oh, we can like sort of draft the logic of the EU, but then we output to the different, to the different uh, local languages and just cultural quirk. Uh, so this is, this is another nice one. So this is uh, doing it for, for, for financial agreements. Uh, we really like this one. So financial agreements are like probably like the best to do this in. Uh, first of all, because that's where the money is. But also, secondly, it's also like 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 the easiest kind of like like they're like the most they're most the simplest to to like reason about because basically all financial groups they kind of go oh you know you know you know uh, this kind of money under some conditions turns into this other kind of money but then this other kind of turns into other kind of money and it's like oh it's like this big crazy <laughs> flowchart and and um, and they realize oh well, here's what you can represent these crazy flowcharts using uh, using um, client state machines so here's one that they wrote uh, it's it's in their paper. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, it looks. I mean, it looks a little complicated. I mean, this is considered really nasty for a lawyer, but you know, for a software programmer, oh, we can handle that. <laughs> That's not so bad. I, I've, I've definitely noticed that when lawyers think think, think they have complex contracts, oh, it's nothing. <laughs> it's nothing. Like like as software developers, we deal with you know things hundred x, thousand x, 
of what they're used to. So, um, so this is good. So I, I, I'm very optimistic about us going to like sort of brute force uh, all possible states of this, and we can examine it. So, uh, so this is so 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 this is kind of like the the, the prior art. Uh, this is sort of uh, this sort of a re this is a reason why we think this 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 is novel. This is a good idea. So this is uh, so this is Ken Adams. Ken Adams. Uh, so he, he's an American. He's probably uh, the the most famous contract drafter in the world, and he tweets sometimes. Uh, and when he tweets, uh, so he had this very nice one. He had this nice question. Uh, and he was asking uh, these two sentences. Uh, Acme shall keep the information confidential, versus Ac Acme shall pay the purchase price. And then he asked, oh, you know, how, how do we call these two things? Amusingly, he asked linguist. Uh, it turns out that the distinction among these was actually solved 40 years ago in computer science. So here's this thing. It's called computation tree logic. It's a way of representing events. Here's basically how it is. So you start at the top, and you move down at the bottom. And every single bottom is going to get, so every single, every node below you is sort of a possible future at the next time step. And it gives you an excruciatingly detailed uh, grammar for detailing all, like, all possible futures and events among them. And, he, and they're like completely, and this was invented in about like 81. So I'll kind of show you how this works. So all right, so, so, so you, you have some, some, some initial state, and you're at the top, and it says, oh, uh, uh, there must exist some event, so uh, the next state. So OK, if I'm in state A, which would be the red, uh, the next event must be state B, and that'd be like the blue. Or it might be, uh, it'd be oh, you know, you know, for one possible future, it must be state B. Another one would be, oh, you know, you, you know, you know, in all possible futures, uh, B will always be true. So this would be something like, you know, you know, acting would keep the information confidential. Another one might be, in one possible future, B will always be true. Another one would be, uh, in, in all possible futures, uh, B, B will be true at least once. This would be, uh, Acme will pay the purchase price. Uh, and there, there it is that in one possible future, B, B, B will be true once. Uh, or more sophisticated, we can say, oh, you know, in the future, there will be, uh, there will be you know, some state B, but then absolutely some state C. And C will, will always come after B. So an example of this would be, uh, B is maybe you pay for something, and then C, you know, you get the thing shipped to you. I mean, and there could be some delay between the shipping. That'd be the, the blank node there. So, uh, and even this, this whole this whole grammar, this whole this, this, the way you express this in English, and here it is in, in pretty tree in pretty tree diagrams. So here's kind of like I mean, we don't have to belabor the point, but this would be uh, acting to keep the information confidential because it's confidential, you know, forever. Uh, and this, sh this would be a, 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 a Acme will, will pay the, the, the purchase price because presumably you only pay it once. Uh, and like, and he's and like, oh, <laughs> like, and once you formalize that, you can you can specify all kinds of things. And well, I have like no clue you can do this. Um, but you know, but 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 in, in verification of, of software, of simple software for firmware, uh, we've been doing this for about four years. Um, yeah. So you know, so so this is so this is sort of a, a, a taste. Uh, for, uh, for, for how a language like this, this will look. Uh, so, and basically, we're, we're working on it. The problem is that, so we just want to kind of create like a periodic table of contracts, which actually has like never been done before. And so this is not like a, this is like a, not really like a multi month long project, it's like a multi year long project. So, um, so there will be updates coming on. So, uh, so, so yeah, so that's the vision, that's where we are so far. Uh, and this is legalese in the company. So, this, so we are a Singaporean startup. Uh, we were started in 2015 at JFDI. Actually, no, I think we technically incorporated in, in six, no, it's a one Okay, so we started JFDI. Uh, they were a, a Singaporean um, um, incubator. They recently shut down to, to their, for their uh, founders to go on and do bigger and better things. Uh, we, we made our first, so Origins was started. Uh, so, okay, so the way it was started, so, um, the the startups within JFDI uh, they they'd be raising you know maybe maybe say you know a uh, uh, hundred thousand dollars but to do their seed round the lawyer wants somewhere between five and ten k and you know and you don't really want to spend five to ten percent of all your money just on legal fees so they would often try and cobble together uh, the, the 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 legal lawyers themselves like online templates but they'd usually do it wrong <laughs> and and so so they say oh it'd be nice if we get this kind of a, a contracts on rails experience. Uh, so they could so they could do do, do simple agreements, and uh, so and we made that. Uh, it's it, it's a v1.legalese.com. It's meant to sort of be uh, it's made to be usable by a determined user. 
Uh, and yeah, so that's, that's, that's our first thing. Uh, so then it got, got spun out of JFDI. We, we, we won some grants. If you're, if you're curious, if you're interested in the blockchain space, uh, they give money for blockchain stuff. And if you're interested in doing things uh, related to uh, improving the Asian economy, they give, they give uh, um, free, free money. Uh, so we've been interested in working with the Ethereum Foundation. So the idea is something like this. So the claim is that just as it's easier to like fetch entries from a database using SQL than it is, say, using JavaScript, uh, so currently you write a, a Ethereum contract something a little bit like JavaScript. So if you're uh, using the, it's called a, a, a Solidity. The idea is that, that when we make our L4 language, we could replace uh, the JavaScript Solidity language with it. And hopefully it'd be you know, more secure and things like that. Um, so you know, that, that's why Ethereum's interested, because we might hypothetically become their, their primary language. Um, we recently raised our seed round for, 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 for 300K. We are basically we're doing a better version of, of the V1 app. And we are, we're interested in talking with, with IMDA. So what IMDA wants to do, uh, they want to, have, they want to get a query, a central server. So I specify my contract in a formal language. And I, and, and I ask IMDA, is this legal? And, you know, and they'll give back you know, a yes or no uh, or, 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 or what statutes they're violating. So it's sort of, sort of automatic compliance to make sure you know, you're always obeying the law. Because you know, IMDA is really into that. Uh, yeah, and we're currently doing rev revenue experiments. Uh, so this is our V1 product. Uh, you can actually use this right now if you want. Uh, this is this is uh, this is where you can get 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 your 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 seed fundraising for your Singaporean company uh, for free. Uh, and this is kind of like this is kind of what it looks like. You, know, you, you can put your 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 pre money valuation, what kind of security type you want, and you know who the entities are, who the investors are, and you just hit generate, and poof, there you go. Uh, so uh, so our, our business model here it's. It's a little disruptive. So uh, we're usually these things cost, you know, $500 you know, dollars an hour. Uh, if we're doing this all in software, you know, I mean, we can do it like a dollar, <laughs> you know, you know, a page. And we don't really like, care what's on the page. It can be like as complicated as you want because, you know, it's totally fine with us. And um, yeah, so the same way that Uber makes $1 for every taxi ride in the world, we want to make $1 for, for, for every contract signed in the world. And that's like, fundamentally the idea. And it's turning business, it's turning a, a contract drafting from a high, a high, wait, high margin, low volume business to a, a high volume, low margin business. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, so that, that, that's a kind of the idea. Um, oh, we're done? Oh, okay, all right, all right, no, okay, well, basically done. Uh, this, is, this is our, our, our expansion path. Uh, we'll start here, and we'll stand out and up. Uh, um, uh, this is, is some smart people think think think, think this is a, a, a good idea. So this this is Mark Andreessen. He's a famous Silicon Valley investor, and he says yes, this idea is great. You should do it. And he says yes, we will do it. Um, and this, this is what we, we have for you. If you want free investment paperwork, it's free. Just get it. Uh, if you wait a few years later, um, it'll be about ten dollars. <laughs> so um, but you know but now it's free. Um, and if you if you're curious, interested in, uh, in, in in you know kind of like a revenge of the nerds on on, on law, um, you know where the law is like the cool kids and you were like the logician, uh, you know this, you, you can you can read you can read about how to beat them. Um, and eventually we'll be offering you a, a language doing this. And right now, so we're here. We're looking for people that want to give us money to do research, and we're looking for people that are interested in, in, in programming languages and Haskell experience. So if you're interested in um, in joining us with that. Those are kind of like the, the requirements. And then we're done. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't know I went over. Maybe, maybe Vajir can take the questions outside. Oh, I was really late then. Oh, okay. I, I was really late. Okay. That is all.